If you've seen our recent review of the new BMW 3 Series, you will know it is an outstanding car. But Jaguar isn't ready to give up the fight just yet and has been busy revising its 3 Series rival, the XE, to ensure it remains on buyer's shortlists. In this Car Gurus review, we are going to take a closer look at the XE to see if Jaguar has done enough to warrant your attention. But before we begin, here's a reminder to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss one of our videos. I think it's fair to say there's never really been any problems with the way the XE looks, which is why this facelift is kind of limited to new bumpers and lights. The idea is to make it look wider and lower and therefore sportier. And as to be said, on these 19 inch wheels of our test car, it's certainly a classy looking bit of kit. Being a four door saloon, you'd expect the XE to be practical for people and their luggage, but that's a space where it's always lagged behind rivals. This opening is on the narrow side as well and split folding rear seats are an optional extra. It's here in the back where the XE is at its most compromised, whether you're talking about headroom, leg room, space across the bench, and even things like getting in child seats, which is more difficult than it needs to be because of these big bolsters at the side. It's just not as good as its rivals. That's not to say you can't get people back here because clearly you can, it's just tighter than we'd like. These, of course, are things we all know from the previous XE. Move to the front and you begin to see where the new additions come in. Ah, yes, now the XE is feeling like a newer, fresher car. In fact, given that the basic architecture of the dash is pretty much the same, it's amazing what a difference the upgrades have made. They center mainly on this area here around the central screens, and in particular, this lower screen. It's borrowed from the I-Pace electric Jaguar, and it deals with climate control, and is also a secondary controller for the media and phone. It looks super slick. Um, I would say, though, that the functionality is slightly overcomplicated in some ways. For example, if you turn that, you change the temperature, pull it out if you want to change the fan speed, and then push it back in again to change the temperature. It just feels like they're adding an extra step to what should be a simple process. Jaguar's latest infotainment system is definitely an improvement on what was in the old XC. It looks better, it's easier to use, and it now includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can also now have JLR's clear sight rear view mirror in the XC as tested as part of our Range Rover Evoque review. In this car's SE R Dynamic trim, it certainly feels high quality in here, and in car storage is really good. And there's big door bins as well. Another example, though, of Jaguar Land Rover perhaps overcomplicating things can be seen in this light switch on the indicator stock. Now, in the previous XE, you would have turned this and it would have stayed on side lights, dip beam, auto, whatever you left it on. In this car, it always flicks back. So whatever setting you put it on, it flicks back to the middle, which just means you then have to look at the dash to see which mode you're actually in. It just, again, seems like adding a bit more faff to what should be a really easy process. And what do we think about this new steering wheel as well? Again, it's taken from the I-Pace, and that car, I think it works really well, but somehow in the XE, it just seems a bit chunky. Thankfully though, the driving position itself is excellent. It's here on the open road where the XE really starts to shine because this has always been a proper driver's car. The steering is, I think, even better than in the 3 Series. It's got a lovely rate of response and a natural feel and weight to it. And the ride and handling is just awesome. Even on these bigger wheels and with sport suspension, the XE glides along a road and the chassis is agile, but also very balanced. In addition to the standard rear-wheel drive model, Jaguar also offers a four-wheel drive XE, and all models come with an eight-speed automatic gearbox as standard. Whereas in the previous XE, you got a rotary gear controller for the automatic gearbox, in this one, you get this sport shift stick, like in the F-Type, and it is paired with either a two-liter diesel with 180 horsepower or a two-liter turbo petrol, with which you can have either 250 horsepower or 300 horsepower. This is the P250, and surprise, surprise, it's the 250 horsepower petrol model. That's a good amount of power and results in a quick car. 0 to 62 mile per hour takes six and a half seconds, our mid-range pull is excellent. The available driving modes like Sport, Eco and Dynamic are accessed via this little switch down here. They do things like they ramp up the throttle response and the steering weight, and they change the dials to red when you're in Dynamic, because that's obviously sporty. And if you want Sport mode on the gearbox, you simply flick it to the left here, or if you want to take control of the gears yourself, 
you just pull these paddles behind the steering wheel. That's all fine and good, but unfortunately this drivetrain doesn't sparkle in the same way as the ride and handling. For a start, the gearbox can be a bit indecisive. Like for example, sometimes it will take a bit longer to kick down than you want, and then it will give you more gears like that than you're expecting. Also, there's a slight delay between lifting off the throttle and the revs dropping. Now, these things don't really matter at all. You don't notice them if you're just cruising. But when you start to up the pace, they just remove some of the sharpness from the driving experience. It's in details such as this and the compromised rear space that ultimately the XE is not as good as a 3 Series. However, you have to frame that in the context of the 3 Series not just being a good car, but an exceptional one. Put it like this, if we were doing scores out of 10, this XE would be a solid 7, possibly an 8. But the BMW, well that's a 10. Would you take an XE over a 3 Series Mercedes C-Class or Audi A4? Let us know in the comments. And remember to head to cargurus.co.uk to find a great deal from a top rated dealer when searching for your next car.